What's going on boys? Log guys here, welcome back to another video now, Rasmus Hoyland play review. Now, a play review like this is not really a card that I like that much, normally speaking, but this is one of those cards that i probably make an exception for. Like, if you like those tall players and you like to head of the ball, this is definitely a card that has it. Now, he's a bit of a pace merchant. There's a few things why I think Hoyland has got that benefit. He does have the finesse shot trait. Now, contrary to belief, um, this finesse shot trait has not been nerfed. The finesse shots are still... Um, still very effective, if not the same amount of effectiveness. It's only been reduced a little bit. So players like Sun and everything are still good. So just on the finesse shot trait alone, he's a very good card. The reason for that is that he's got the good finishing, good shot power. The only thing that he does lack is the long shots and the curve. So maybe those types of shots that Sun can do outside the box, he can't. Because you need curve for the ball to go around the goalkeeper. And you need also long shots to basically increase your long shot potential outside the box. So maybe inside the box, he's a finesse shot beast. But outside the box, it wouldn't be as powerful as maybe someone like Sun. Don't forget, if, you just, if we just show you something quickly, if I compare this to a card like Sun, you can see even though Sun on paper, you can see although Sun um, looks like, okay, he lacks in a few things, but you can see here, it's the penalties that lots and the volleys that really fluctuate their overall stats. But you can see he's got the 89 long shots. And then for the curve, you can see Sun's got more uh, composure and he's got 87 curve. So that's the issue when you go and play with Hoyland. You're not really going to get that real finesse shot play style benefits as you would with other players. Now, the thing that he does have is rapid and quick step. Now, these two together are very effective. Quick step allows you to dribble with the ball um, much. At a, well, allows you to basically dribble into the space with higher acceleration. And in rapid, especially if you kick the ball going forward, allows you to beat the opponent. So the way I see this card is, he's basically a pace merchant. Now, with 4 star, 4 star, 6 foot 3, high high work rates can probably play anywhere along the attacking line, but mainly as a strike, I would say. He's got 77 agility and 74 balance. Look, it's not terrible, but with someone that's 6 foot 3, you're going to need top to agility balance them to feel more agile. He is not for agile. If you're looking for someone that's got the ball at their feet and that's someone that can maybe get the ball and dribble, this is not the card for you. The composure does let him down. That's the only one of the few things that I would say is as a striker lets him down. Um, but if you're just going to use purely finesses, you're fine. Now, this is where his key benefits are. 96 heading accuracy, 95 jumping and 90 strength. 74 aggression and 79 stamina. Now, the stamina is okay because the strike out of on stay forward is not the end of the world. The 95 jumping, the 96 um, heading accuracy, with the 90 strength and at least that aggression as well, he's going to at least jostle for the ball at a very good rate. So if you want to cross the ball and you want to pass the ball to him, he's definitely a top tier card inside the box if you're going to header your shots. So if you like to gain, if you like to get a corner and you like to score corners, then this is the card for you. So unlike other cards, He's got that, that two dimension about him where you can also head at the ball and at least shoot. Four star, four star. This passing is dreadful. Par his 87 short pass, which is probably the most important. Realistically, I see him as a striker. So most of the time, his passes are going to be short pass radius anyway. They're not going to be long passes. But this is the kind of card where you get the ball at your feet and you just run forward. That is where this card is going to excel the most. Now, in terms of his price, this is the thing that I would say is probably going to make his card feel a bit meh. His price is a bit expensive. 400k, yes, there's a chance it can go down, but I see him as one dimension. You know, if we compare him, just I'll give you a bit of an example, right? Cantona. Don't get me wrong, Cantona is almost double the price, but yes, if Hoyland maintains the price, it's better, you're better off going with someone with Cantona. And the reason why is because Cantona has got the five star skill moves. If you like someone who's got the, got the skill moves, then you like to use skills, then Cantona is the player to go. The second thing is Cantona does have over Hoyland, is he does have the technical and the power shot, um, which is probably the main ones, and Trevella. So maybe you can argue as an out and out strike. And even if we go to a drill team balance, which you're going to hear and see in a second, is the drill team balance of Cantona is much better. So Although they are very similar on paper, Cantona's a tiny bit shorter and it's got that better drill team balance. Um, so that's the real benefit. You're paying for something like this with a card like this. Yes, you can argue it's quite similar to a card like Cantona. Maybe you can argue Cantona kind of lacks in a few areas. You know, the tap positioning is the same. Finishing is basically the same. Shot power is basically the same. Long shots are better. But the volleys and the volleys and penalties makes um, Cantona's shooting look 89. That's so, realistically, this is kind of irrelevant. His dribbling is much better, and uh, realistically, the physicality-wise, Hoyland wins. So, 
I would say, look, for the price, he's not too bad. One thing I would say, though, if I want to extend this over here, we compare this to someone like Ronaldo. Now, don't get me wrong, again, this is, again, going to be hard to link, but this would be a more of a like-for-like -like comparison, right? You see Ronaldo, I lacks the pace, but he's got much better finishing, better shot power, better long shots, better of everything, right? And then he's got um, the better passing, but lacks the short passing. But that's completely fine, Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, the agility and balance, Ronaldo's got better agility. Ronaldo lacks the balance, but the, the agility kind of helps a bit more. But they're still going to both feel clunky. But you see a 97 composure, Ronaldo does help a lot more. And then from the attacking point, yes, Ronaldo's got one less jumping, one less stamina. Yes, the strength is where he lacks comparison, and so does the agility balance. But with Ronaldo, the, the one thing that you're paying for with Ronaldo is that, number one, you're paying for him himself. But he does have the, um, the power shot, uh, incisive pass, and he's got aerial. The aerial is going to be some, somewhat important. So I think realistically, look, if you're, if you're not going to use the finesses, it's worth getting someone like Ronaldo. It's quite easy to get Ronaldo on chemistry now with the Al Nassar links. That's the thing people said in the beginning, oh, Al Nassar haven't got really any players. Um, you now have Taliska. You can even go with Kessie as well uh, from the same, and even Neymar from the same league as well. Apart from that, the Premier League, there isn't very much. That's what I'm trying to say. He's, he's kind of in that unique position where if you're looking for that Premier League attacker, yeah, you can maybe go with Haaland, but Haaland, I'll be honest, is not really... Well, first of all, you're paying for three-star, three-star, okay? So we'll go with base Holland in a second. We're just gonna, I'm just going to bring up some few players, I think, that could compete here. Got Hoyland, of, co of course. Tevez, I'm not really going to put him in. Um, Robbie Keane, I'm going to put in. And Ollie Watkins is the main one. And the rest is, is okay. The rest, I'm not really... I'm not going to really going to count the rest. Now, you see with Haaland, the issue is with Haaland, let's say even go, we go over the gold card, there's not that much difference. There's only a one stat boost. 80k, so it's much more cheaper. Three star, three star. Um, but Haaland, in theory, has quick step and he's three star, three star. Now, if you want someone that's just tall and that can header and you don't mind about the finesse shot play style, then go with someone like Haaland. That's why I would say where he's positioned is quite unique because with that finesse shot play style changes the card quite a lot. Haaland, of course, not got the best acceleration and, of course, is three-star, three-star, and that's probably the one of the biggest downsides about using a card like this. Then you have Haaland, as I said, with the finesse shot play style plus. Now, Robert Keane, if you want someone that's agile and someone that can fit into your team very easily for chemistry, he's the card to go to. The reason why I bring this card up is because he does have the finesse shots, technical, um, but he's got a bit of everything. You can put a hunter on him, and then you've got a pretty decent card. That's one thing I'd say an alternative. Maybe someone that's still got the strength, not entirely weak, um, can do a bit of everything. And then, of course, Ollie Watkins, which is now gone. We're going to even compare the inform Watkins, because, of course, you can still buy inform Watkins. Inform Watkins is very similar, 5'11", um, 94 stamina, 82 strength, lacks the aggression, but still got the jumping, and he's got the rapid play style. So Ollie Watkins could be a cheap alternative. So where he's positioned at the moment is Canada's unique place. Is he worth 400k? I think maybe 400k is pushing it. I would say maybe he's worth 250. That's probably where I would probably say he's worth value-wise. But I said the finesse shot play style plus is really carrying this card. So there isn't that many options. United and you've got a Denmark links. I'll be honest, you can probably put an engine on him um, to increase that passing and that agility and balance. But I don't think it's worth it. I think realistically you want to go with two. You either want to go with a Hawk because that way you get his pace in 94. And finishing up a little bit as well. And at least this way you get his aggression and strength and jumping up. So you can make use of that heading as well. Or you can go ahead and put a uh, marksman on him. But again, that's not really going to help, but you can improve that finishing and you can improve that jumping as well. Another option as well, um, apart from Marksman, is probably the probably the real go-to is really a Hunter. I think with a Hunter, you kind of bang out his pace to 9 to 9. That's where you can really abuse him is like that, that pace abuse down. You can see in some of these clips, he's got the pace abuse running straight through with that rapid and a quick, especially push the ball going forward. But at least you increase his finishing and his shot power. The thing that he will lack is a long shot. So Hunter, I would say mainly for someone that's inside the box. If you're going to be using outside the box and you want to try your best to make use of the finesse shots, you can probably go with the Hawk. Uh, Marksman doesn't really... Give him that pace boost that you really want. Maybe they help with the dribbling a little bit. So a kind of a variety. I'd probably say Hunter, maybe lean towards a Hawk if he's someone who's doing finesses. But you're mainly going to see him in the two striker stuff. Anyways, that is the Hoyland player review. Is he meta? Probably not. But he has those unique places. If you're looking for someone that's tall, someone that can head the ball and someone can just run, he's definitely the card for you. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take it easy. And I'll catch you next time. Peace out.